Uh, I was in CTO PCI, it adds, uh, you know, a lot of value <coughs> and clears many uh, aspects during the procedure, like entering ambiguous entry and to re-enter true lumen in anti-grade wiring and enter anti-grade space in difficult reverse cart and identify and, and navigate side branches within CTO and also evaluate lesions distal to CTO and choose landing zones, stun diameters in length, and also reducing contrast volume. So to enter an ambiguous entry like this, so oscillality, total occlusion. So if you do without uh, I was guided entry and send anti-grade wire, and if it is sub-intimal, you may end up in closing LCX hostium. And if you go retrograde, and again do same thing, uh, doing an extended reverse card, in LMCA, you may end up in closing LCX. Uh, so ideally is basically go with the uh, IOS guided entry and then if it goes to lumen, it's fine. Otherwise you can do a reverse cut in Austral LED and, you know, uh, and uh, close the case. So uh, the most important prerequisite for IOS guided cap puncture is the size of the side branch, you know, proximal to the cap. So the diameter and the length should be you know, acceptable, and based on the length, we have to choose IOS catheter, uh, the tip to transducer difference, you know, uh, distance, which makes uh, sense. In this kind of uh, total occlusion with side branch, it is almost impractical to send IOS catheter. And also here, though the size is good, it is quite loopy side branch. Again, it is difficult to do an IOS gated entry. So the steps being, you know, identification of proximal cap and wiring techniques, and confirmation of central wire entry and then consolidate your position and move on. So to identify proximal cap, so in this case, <clears throat> so use a side branch which is close to your uh, CTO vessel, uh, that's in this case it is Ramos, and then do an IVUS. You can see at three o'clock, so uh, there is a, a, a vessel shadow coming and joining your main vessel, so which, works as an identification. You can see here there is no uh, shadow and you can see here there is a shadow appearing and now you can see here and then there'll be fusion of these two shadows and you don't see any media between this uh, fusion and so you can see here it's completely now fused. That's a proximal cap. So that's where you know you have to start your wire and now you can see the sudden jump in vessel size which so the two things which makes you identify is one is absence of media in the zone and second is sudden jump in vessel size which, which makes you understand where your uh, ostium is. And one, you can see here again uh, LED and we did a, um, yeah, I was, you can see there is a clear entry point and also you can see a kind of uh, fibrous, uh, uh, fibrocalcific speck sitting there uh, that also decides, you know, which wire you will choose. And in that case, Gaia didn't work, so we have to move on to Harnet wire. So sometimes, despite your IVAS from side branch, you are not able to, you may not be able to make out when there is a severe calcium, it is very difficult to see where your, you know, a proximal cap and vessel is. So in those cases, you have to go for alternative techniques. So once you wire proximal cap, uh, so how to wire it? So you can use a seven French guide, which allows IVAS and fine cross, eight French guide, IVAS in Corsair, and also you can use I, uh, eight French guide with a single wire, IVAS in the uh, WM and catheter. So you can use 3D wiring also. So you can see uh, here, so I'm using a Hornet wire and placed it onto you know, the cap in IVAS and then push it proximally. Uh, and that entered into the cap. Once you enter, you confirm it uh, with IVAS. So you can see here, you can see the wide shadow. It should be within the media in all views, which I'll show you in next slide. So here you can see th this is a wire, and you can see this is the limit of media, and again wire within the media, and again wire within the media, yes. And now you can see here, this is the media and you know your wire is inside. So you confirm it by IVAS and then you consolidate your position 
by sending microcatheter into the proximal cap and de-escalate wire and move on. So <clears throat> you can also puncture sometimes uh, proximal cap from retrograde. So like in this case of uh, OM total occlusion uh, and the graft is tightly diseased with clot and patient had ischemic MR. We didn't want no flow in uh, OM uh, because of MR. So what we did, anti-grade wiring couldn't be done because of am ambiguous cap, though we tried, and the vessel size is not conducive for anti-grade uh, IVUS puncture. So what we did, we went into grad directly, and uh, yeah, so, and uh, uh, wire is sent, Gaia 2 wire, and you can see the wire is actually uh, in the subintima here. You can make out here. So uh, this graphic represents, you know, where the wire location is. It is away from the carina, so in the subintima. So there is every chance I may lose this side branch. So what we did, I pulled the wire back and went close to carina and entered into the true lumen. In fact, it is not a cap puncture. I punctured through the carina. So even if you come through carina, that will excuse you, as in this case. So though I entered through the carina, the side branch is still open. Uh, yeah. So in a difficult reverse card situation where externalization is not happening, like in this case, so RCA, CTO, very small CTO in a post CABG patient, we never thought it troubles us. But our anti-grade wire escalation failed. Retrograde wire escalation failed. Then we came to reverse cart. So we did a, a direct reverse cart failed. Then we moved on to extended reverse cart. So wire came into the uh, lumen. But when I tried to externalize, wire is not coming into uh, anti-grade guide. So that's when we decided to do an IVUS. You can see this IVUS. Here, the wire is in subintima, that is close to the CTO. And as I'm coming proximally, the wire moves into true lumen. You can observe. So now it's coming into the true lumen. And when I'm coming further proximally in uh, right coronary artery, so it goes back into the uh, subintima again. Uh, you can observe this wire. It moves back into subintima again. So that's what happens when there is a loop in the proximal uh, uh, coronary proximal to the CTO, see how it went back into the subintima. So that's why it is uh, not coming into anti-grade guide and we are not able to externalize. You can see this is at point A in the true lumen. This is, sorry, uh, at, uh, this is point B at true lumen. And again, this is point C close to the ostium where it is in the uh, subintima. That's when we decided to send a guideliner where the wire is in true lumen and we pull it out. So. So that's what you can do. You can see here, guideliner, and then the wire comes into guideliner, and then you can externalize, and you can complete a uh, uh, case. So any difficult reverse cut, so you overlap both wires by 15 to 25 mm, and then, uh, yeah, do an IVUS after creating space. And based on the location of wires in IVUS, you can decide your strategy. If both wires are in intima, both wires in uh, subintima, it's much easier. So you can just choose a balloon which is uh, equivalent to the vessel size in IVUS, and uh, then you can go with a retrograde wire. Even a, a, a non-penetrating wire is okay. Uh, you can be successful. If that fails, you can use even a guideliner-assisted reverse, reverse card, and sometimes even stunt-assisted we almost rarely use it. And if one wire is uh, uh, subintima and another is uh, uh, intimal, you can see here uh, anti-grade is intimal and retrograde is subintimal. So that's when you, know, you have to use a penetrating wire retrogradely either conquest or harnet and use a balloon which is equal into the vessel size. And uh, uh, if that happens, uh, okay. If that doesn't uh, happen, then move the base of operations and then you can even do IVUS guided reverse cut. And almost same thing uh, if reverse situation of wires exist, like anti-grade is subintimal and retrograde intimal. So go with a high penetrating wire and balloon equal and to the size of the <coughs> vessel. 
and you can even adapt, you know, I was guided uh, reverse cart. So uh, sometimes, you know, to identify and uh, navigate bran uh, branches within the CTO, in this case, a long mid LED CTO, we wide, uh, I was guided, and then we dilated, and you can see this is the wire position uh, in a vessel. We thought it's almost an LED, but when we did an I was, we can see at uh, two to three o'clock, there is a branch, you know, the vessel which is coming and joining this branch. So uh, that's actually the LED, and marking uh, I was catheter wire and, you know, proximal cap relation with wide that side branch, uh, with the 3D wiring. So we can see this is a filler XTR, you know, which is going into the uh, LED. So, and this is after stunting LED. And to evaluate lesions distal to CTO, so you can see this is a proximal LED CTO, uh, uh, wherein uh, we can observe, uh, you know, a collateral pattern. So there are uh, proximal septals filling uh, mid LED, and distal septals uh, filling, uh, yeah, distal LED, and this vessel is almost not visible. It's a kind of watershed zone for collateralization. There is a collateralization filling proximally and distally. So that's when after doing, you know, CTO intervention, so we, may, we might see some lesions there angiographically, but they may not be lesions. So when I did an IVUS, you can see the size of the vessel here and the size of the vessel here, basically entire vessel is negatively remodeled and that is exactly at the watershed zone which I described in angiography. So, and there's no need to stunt, you know, such lesions. We just left that lesion and came out. And sometimes like in this uh, austral RCA total occlusion, we went retrograde, externalized, and uh, balloon dilated, and you can see this is the kind of RCA which is visible. So that's when we decided to do a plug to plug stunting by IVUS. We did a plug to plug stunting. Uh, the area which is not, uh, where there is no plug, we deleted, and you can see this is the result at the end of procedure, and you can see the result after three months. This is immediately post PCI, this is after three months. You will see a good vessel you know, after three months. <clears throat> so I was in subintimal tracking, so, uh, or in ADRs. So when I, in a subintimal tracking, once you create a subintimal hematoma, it is not advisable to do any anti-grade injections. So pro, do I was, decide distal reference, proximal reference, and mark it on fluoro, and then do stunting, so that is uh, better. So otherwise, you will keep expanding subintimal hematoma and keep losing your uh, flow distally. So in ADR, again, same thing. So especially in ADR, where we use extensive knuckling and uh, cross boss, in such situations, always uh, IVUS is, comes at rescue to choose landing zones and stand, stand sizes, and also uh, post ballooning size. Yeah. <clears throat> so in patients with renal failure where you have to do zero or low volume contrast, like in this case, so in, in which case, you know, we used a retrograde wire, we parked it uh, at a distal cap and then started anti-grade wiring and then subsequently enter cases closed with IVUS, uh, sizing everything is done with IVUS and uh, post assessment also done with IVUS we completed case with 4 ml of contrast. So to conclude, so IVUS is important for wiring of CTO to enter ambiguous entry, to re-enter true lumen in anti-grade subintimal wiring, IVUS guided reverse cart, and identify and navigate, navigate site or main branches within CTO and decide on the uh, stunting strategy, evaluate lesions distal to CTO, principally to avoid unnecessary stunting, and choose landing zones in diffuse disease and subintimal hematoma reduce contrast volume in vulnerable patients, and also uh, stunt expansion in subintimal space. Thank you.